welcome to Trashy Trashy, where we take a dumpster dive on this week's garbage people and a look at all the trashiest news stories. My name is Erica, and I'm your host. My name is Cassandra, and I'm your other host. Thank you so much for coming back. We're sorry we missed last week. I'm going to go ahead and say it. It was my fault. Thank you for taking ownership, Cassandra. You know, uh, <laughs> family, uh, family uh, stuff happened, and... I, I had to go. I had to I had to yeah. go down to Arizona and everyone is okay. But, uh, you know, I, I went bowling while I was there to oh, nice. kind of lighten the mood. And I couldn't tag myself at the bowling alley because oh. I didn't want people to know that I was there. Not because I was afraid that, like, you know, I have a giant fan base that will come and murder me, but <laughs> because um, when we pulled up to the bowling alley, it was called Inca Lanes. Oh. And, well, yeah, I mean, already, but it was the only bowling alley that was close mm-hmm. and open. So we're like, all right, well, we'll give it a shot. And then Erica, right there <laughs> The Inca Lanes mascot was like 1930s Looney Tunes level offensive uh, uh. person. So I was like, all right, let's just go. Let's go roll. Let's go bowl. I mean, I'm yeah. I'm certainly not the person who's going to be able to change this, but definitely not going to tag myself here. Yeah. <laughs> I want people to be like, oh, where is that? And then look, <laughs> and then have to see this, like, remember the mascot for the baseball team in Cleveland? Yes. Yes. Yeah. It was like that, but like also had like a little body. So <laughs> it was like Anyways, that, but somehow more offensive. <laughs> it somehow was more offensive. He, he didn't even have a bowling ball. So like, what the hell was the point? I, I, on this note, I have like a, a mini trash and, and something I realized I was never immersed in the world of Dune until like a couple years ago, but my partner was, is like, obs- like loves obsessed with Dune, right? You know, that's a movie about suits. <laughs> yeah, yes. that's a that's a nooner reference for anyone who <laughs> listens to both podcasts. That was an old reference and you're welcome. Anyway, so carry on. So like any, you know, film or movie about like a fictional place, they kind of have their own taxonomy of how like naming and letter conventions work. Right. So, you know, I'm sitting there and I'm reading an article about the new one that's coming out because Austin Butler is playing a character that I'm very excited about. Elvis? In Dune? Elvis. Elvis is going to be in Dune. So very we're very excited about this but you know they, they it's like they have so the names are all like very like like Benny Gesserit, Paul Atreides, Gurney Halleck, uh the, the Harkonians like these are kind of some the namings right but mm-hmm. one fucking character is just named Duncan Idaho <laughs> <I'm> like <laughs> what <laughs> like, <laughs> so the Harkonians are kind of the bad guys and then but so I'm reading this article and it's again, never in this world. And now I'm, I've read some Wikipedias just to be able to watch movies and talk with Winston about it. Fade Rutha, the nephew of the Baron Harkonian. I'm just, I'm reading this article and it's all these goofy naming conventions, like, uh, you know, the way the things are spelled, but I know exactly how all of these are pronounced. And even if they're introducing new characters that I don't know yet, I know how to exactly read their name. And say it as if it were in the the world in the film. And I was like, I can't fucking understand French. I can't look at certain names in different cultures and like understand how I would pronounce them appropriately because I want to be <laughs> respectful and give someone their name. And, you know, like there's certain like, you know, just the way like an E, is it is it this sound or this, you know, the way they have, uh, uh, you know, whatever. Sure. And, and like a lot you of names. Speak Dune. I speak Dune fluently and I'm like, what? I hate this. I hate this about myself right now. But I'm like, I sometimes I I always like if I'm going to speak to someone, I'll Google how to pronounce their name ahead of time with the audio and just like, okay, practice, 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 because I want to say it 
and be respectful. And here I am just going, do, 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 do. oh yeah, Lido, do, 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 the Benny Jesserits, boop, 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 you know, no problems. And it just made me so mad at myself. But Duncan Idaho is the stupidest name in all of Dune. We can just all agree to that, right? Like anyway. I think we've what? all felt like a Duncan Idaho here and there, you know? <laughs> I mean, he's cool, uh, but no, nah, it's dumb. Anyway, I just was like, that, that's so stupid and trashy of me. I'm embarrassed. Is that why you're trash? No, no, oh, no. It's just kind of mini trash. It's just a like mini trash. Like in it. that, in that flavor of like, I look at certain words and I'm like, how does the X and the E, what sound does that make? You know, in their their native tongue, and then you know, I'll have to Google. But here, reading Dune names, and I was so mad. Why are you full trash? Full trash. Okay. So I, wow. Gosh, gosh, gosh. So I, I texted you something. You, you sent something to me and I responded and I, and you were like, that better be why That's you're how trash. Texting works. That's how texting works. If you haven't texted, get on it. It's fun. <laughs> so Cassandra sent me a ad for stool samples. Like, Hey, you can get paid up to Thirty thousand dollars for your poop. So they want and it wasn't a joke. You really like scientists need poo poo. <laughs> they need healthy poop and gut biomes to help people that don't have good one. You know all of this stuff, right? So she sends me. She's like, "Hey, maybe you could do this because I'm still looking for work." <laughs> and I was like, "Oh, girl, already applied." Yeah. and I was rejected. <laughs> My poop. <laughs> was rejected from scientific study now some might argue it needs to be studied by science i know maybe you need i like i want them to to study the rejected poops <laughs> as much as the good ones right but i was like oh yeah no uh already tried it already been turned down <laughs> that's crazy that you're that's a tough <laughs> pill to swallow that your shit is not good enough for science. <laughs> your shit's not good enough for science. Like, what are you looking for? Yes. What thank do you, you? What do you need? Uh, so, I I'm sorry. If this is grossing on anyone who's listening. When did you have to submit some? And then they no, were like, "Absolutely not." I just not. took a Yuck. survey. I just took a survey of height, weight, medical conditions, diet. Da, da, How da, da, often da, da. do you eat McDonald's a week? Yes, yes. You know, hashtag not my king. I'm a McDonald's over a Burger King girl, you know. Of course, with of the, course. the coronation happened. I um just took the survey. So they didn't have a physical sample. I think if they didn't even need it, you didn't even get past the group interview. Yes. If they wow. would have turned down a physical <laughs> sample, I might just jump off a cliff. Like mm -hmm. I would have been like, Nope, thank you. I don't want to be around anymore. It was <laughs> truly embarrassing. Well, you know, and for anyone else who's out there who's interested, um, you can, if you, as long as you have a uh, pristine poop, you're, uh, I don't <laughs> you're know, eligible. anyone <laughs> in their 30s who has pristine poop. We all are figuring out like our, oh, the changes have, in our bodies. Yeah, I have this inflammation. I have that. And I'm allergic to this. Like, things that we, we, we should we have known a, earlier. <laughs> We had a little conversation just this morning being like, hey, I'm going to log on in a second. I have to eat this bagel now because I took my morning pills. And you said, oh, yeah, no worries. Take your time because I need to take my morning pills. Yeah. Like, that's where we're at. Yeah. We yeah. have morning pills, which <laughs> is to assume that we also have evening pills, which oh, I'm yeah. going to tell you right here. I do. I do as well. I do as well. And if Whatever. I don't, if I don't take them, I, I'm like, oh, I feel dysregulated right now. I can tell. Yep. Don't feel good. Don't feel good. I did have um, my psych college, the one who writes the pills. Yeah. He's, uh, he's, he's, he's not dropping me as a client. He's quitting the practice that I go to and going somewhere else. And he's like, sure. You know, it's been a pleasure. You'll have to talk to them about somewhere else. It wasn't an offer of I'll take you to my new one. If you want to see if you're covered. My therapist my... took me to his new one and I was like, wow, like that's pretty cool. Sorry, that's not nice. to brag. No, that's okay. The therapist I hated and wanted to break up with um, didn't offer to take me to her new one. And I was like, perfect. Thank God. 
because I would have gone. <laughs> <laughs> Girl. Oh, we can't get into your therapy. We can't. Get, well, <laughs> we can't. Yeah. It's for a different podcast. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Why are you trash? So I was in, I was in San Diego and I was in Yuma. And uh, while I was in San Diego, um, my in-laws are very generous people and they go to, they, ho- they hold benefits through their foundation and they also support uh, their neighbors who do the same things. They were going to this benefit for the foundation fighting blindness mm-hmm. and they were like, do you guys want to go? And I, first of all, here's how things unfolded. I was planning on taking a cheeky trip to San Diego because my washing machine exploded in my house basically. Yes. Yeah. So I was like, I got to get the frick out of here. So I, and like my husband was already in San Diego. So I was like, I'm coming down and meeting you. What's the weather? Like, I'm just going to be down there for a couple of days. And then as I'm down there, all this stuff goes on with my family and I got to go, you know, to Arizona, whatever. But I'm I'm rocking like the same three outfits every day, which a capsule wardrobe, if you will. Girl, you know how hard I had to work. Like I was an overpack person, and then I've been working so hard to just be like, no, bring what you need and commit mm-hmm. to it, mm-hmm. and you know, and then you can rotate it through and stuff. Mm-hmm. And look what happened because <laughs> I'm down there for over a week in these in whether i'm in san diego or i'm in yuma rocking the same couple of clothes and why does this have to do with this foundation dinner because i for a day job do things for blind and low-sided people Mm -hmm. and so they were like oh like you know we were going to make a donation anyways so we'll go ahead and just you know, buy your guys's tickets. Cause it's like $125 a person to go, right. you know, like it's a benefit. It's an open bar, yeah. but it's a benefit. So they're like, well, well, you guys can come. And we were both like, okay, great. What's, what's the vibe, you know? Cause yeah. like hashtag not all benefits are yes. like these fancy galas. Sure. And they were like, um, and the tickets were already bought by the way. And they were like, uh, oh, just says like, you know, business casual kind of a little bit upscale. And I was like, oh, <laughs> I only have these three outfits. So I was like, okay, I've got black jeans, two different wife beater tank tops because I've just been like thinking those look good on me lately. And they do. They do. But I brought one kind of fun date night outfit in case me and Taylor went on a date. (laughs) And it was a leopard and parrot like kind of pink and orange jungle print short romper with like a a corset tie type look in the back. Like you don't wear a bra. It's so cute. Yeah. For a date. Yes. For <laughs> to a, a date tiki in a bar. Yeah. For a date <laughs> in a fun neighborhood, not appropriate for, but it was all I had. It was either that yeah. or jeans. So I was like, okay, well, I guess we're going to do this. And then I'm like looking, I was like, great. I have my Nike slides, which if you listen to this <laughs> podcast, you know, I can't wear without socks because of my freak toe or <laughs> which has not grown back yet and has oh. not been painted. Oh, so it's obvious. All my other toes are still bright blue. Um, or I have my Brooks tennis shoes that I wear 24 seven, um, that are gray from, you know, LA smog. And (laughs) so I was like, I don't think this is a good idea. You guys, like I'm starting to get a little bit of cold feet going to this. (laughs) I'm like, I'm going braless. It's kind of chilly out. So I was like, all right, I have a a hoodie that has my works logo on it. (laughs) Or a fuzzy Costco jacket. And I was like, I guess I'm going Costco jacket. So I'm at a nice benefit with people in nice clothes and dresses. And I'm wearing Brooks (sighs) with socks that show and uh, the little shorter, short romper jungle print with no bra and a fuzzy Costco jacket. Oh my God. It looks like I, 
it, it, it like this it's is fine. my worst nightmare <clears throat> I, I, I couldn't get over it. And everyone I'm, was like, it's oh, fine. Like, literally, it's I'm, fine. And I was like, you don't get it. I live to dress up. And if I, I would have. I I have other things at yes. my house that I could have worn. I could have really turned to look tonight. But I wasn't ready for this. I literally, anytime I go anywhere, I will pack a specific, like a dress or an outfit. And Winston's like, there's, we're, we're going to dig wells in Idaho. <laughs> no, like, you know, like whatever it is. And I have always said, well, what if I have tea with the queen? What yeah. if I get invited to tea with the queen? And he's like, we're going to be in a mine underground for eight days solid, no sunlight. And I'm like, I need to have one dress just in case. <laughs> I uh, always know- done that. I'm an overpacker. I, I I also I'm having some family troubles. I brought a carry on suitcase. Oh wow. you! I'm trying to capsule wardrobe in here, but totally. this thing was packed to the brim. Brim, yeah. you know. I was like, this thing's gonna bust midday. You use packing cubes? Yes, of course. Okay, good. Of course, I got to get the suppression ones. But anyway, but but the point. So I I brought these outfits, and I'm like, okay, like a uh, cam. You know this. This short can go with this linen shirt and also the other shirt. I'm really trying to, because I don't know how long I'm going to be here. And yeah. so <laughs> the capsule wardrobe for me, but I, I brought a dress for another circumstance, but I always pack, you know, and I go, well, what if we have tea with the queen? What if we're invited? Uh, look, <laughs> it's never going to, it's never going to happen to me again. Okay. Yeah. Like you'll never catch me slipping. Fool me once. No, absolutely not. And my mother-in-law was like, oh, you know, maybe, maybe you guys should keep like a couple sets of clothes down here, you know, cause we go there pretty often. <laughs> sure. And that was like, then I'm faced with like, do you understand how much my sizes fluctuate? You think I can yeah. just sacrifice a good pair of jeans to yeah. just sit in your house? And, yeah. and don't you understand that I rent all my clothes? Yeah. <laughs> I can't do that. I can't do that. <laughs> Okay, can I leave a swimsuit down there? Sure. I'm going to pack another one, though, that looks better. Like, yeah, (laughs) I just can't believe that that happened to me. And and you know what? You look at like because we took some photo booth pictures there. They had a photo booth, which I'm like, hello, a benefit. Get a photo booth. It was fantastic. And uh, so you can't tell from the photo booth pictures, luckily, but. Uh, yeah, I felt like an idiot. I'm not going to lie. And this was like some of the people who hadn't seen me since my wedding, like the people who were like kind of mutuals there. Mm. And they're like, oh, my God. And no one was saying anything. But I was like, you're these people are being really polite to not no. look at my tennis shoes. And I think Taylor said he was like, well, you know, like su- that you probably look super rich because only the super rich dress like this. And I was like, I don't want that. <laughs> I don't want that. Rich people also dress nice. Yeah. I'm not I'm not going to Starbucks right now. I'm I'm at a benefit. All right. Well so, anyways. What would you wear to <clears throat> Sunday lunch at a Kins in South, you know, South Kensington restaurant at an upscale uh, you know, Asian restaurant? Well, what time of year is it? Oh, let's say like a few weeks ago. A few weeks ago, I posted in April, April showers, bring me I would say probably a, a spring inspired floral dress. Oh, gorgeous. Would you would you bring a, a diaper to child and potty train them at the restaurant in front of everyone? Mm, that's when you're losing me. Mm-hmm. Well, this happened to a couple. Um, so a. A uh, UK couple were left disgusted from the dailymail.co. Uh, they saw other diners let their toddler use a potty seat in front of them during a Sunday lunch at the South Kensington restaurant. They brought it, of course, to next door to discuss. Oh, people get crazy on next door. <laughs> people get so, I'm sorry to like do this, but my mom posted something on next door because um, you know, someone had passed away and she was trying to like kind of offload some stuff. And 
some people would like just like reply with like emojis or something <laughs> and she was like this is stupid like why like are you gonna take it or not don't just put an emoji and i was like mom they're actually helping your metrics because the more comments yeah. you have the more they'll rock it up she was like oh and I, was, I, was, I don't think these boomers know that they're doing this yeah. but like they are helping you anyways carry on have you seen wendy's you know wendy's the fast food burger yes. joints facebook social media i'm not on facebook but mm-hmm. um, I know that their Twitter is very good. Well, their Twitter is very good. But what they've been doing on Facebook, because they have to pay for reach, all this stuff, they're like, you know what? Screw it. They now act as if they are boomers on Facebook. Love it. For their entire Facebook persona. So they'll put like this smiley face background <laughs> over a photo of Diane said she tagged me in a photo and I can't see it. Is any, can you help me, Brandon? <laughs> <laughs> Just, I love just it. post that boomers. Whatever. It's fantastic. Anyway, <clears throat> the restaurant said the incident is being investigated. But here's what was this. The, the, the restaurant is saying that the customers overreacted. So it says the toddler only urinated into the potty. The table was at least three meters away. I do think the other diners overreacted. The child was about two years old and was with his pregnant mother. Um. Girl, sorry if you I can't don't... manage to get your kid to the bathroom. Don't go out in public. I don't know. I'm coming. I'm speaking as someone who's never been pregnant, who's never mm-hmm. had a two year old and stuff. But I do have. Honestly, I'd literally rather you hover over me and breastfeed. Mm-hmm. Like I think that people can do that in public, and that's fine. But when it comes to letting your kids uh pull out their potty and piss in front of people in the middle of the restaurant what are you teaching them because you're not potty training them because if you were potty training them you would teach them that we need to go all the way to the bathroom yes i don't think i'm being controversial here personally but you know lord knows everyone gets mad about everything these days oh my god i am getting old that sentence just came out of my mouth but the ladies (laughs) If someone's like, those ladies are yelling at us or talking, we're the ladies now in the story. <laughs> oh my god, <sighs> we really, we really are. Um, yeah, this is I. This would make me mad. Like, and the fact yeah. that people are like, oh, they're overreacting, because I guess the couple was like, oh, this baby took a shit in there, and then everyone's like, oh, you're overreacting. It just peed. No one is overreacting. You yes. don't. You're not teaching your kid anything useful by letting them pee in the middle of a restaurant, even if it is in their little toddler bucket. I'm I'm sure it's challenging to get to the bathroom if you're pregnant and also have a two. I'm sure it's understandable, but that's also when you say, well, then we just won't be able to dine out if I don't have a secondary (laughs) parent or person, you know, if there's no one else in this ecosystem to help. Like, then it just, you know, that's fine. Not everyone should be everywhere. <laughs> I think that's yeah. okay. It's, it takes a village, as they say. I remember when I was working at P.F. Chang's, uh, some woman took it upon herself to change her baby at, like, in the booth that she was sitting no. in. And I was like, dude, this is, like, not chill. Like, yeah. I, again, I'm coming from someone who's never had a baby. Sure, sure. But not parents i'm here. sure that there's like pads and things that you can put over the changing tables that are in most restrooms if they gross you out or like yes. you know maybe like do it in the trunk of the car i don't yes. know there's probably other places to do it rather than at the A table booth. at the restaurant yeah like that you're at and that other humans are like do what the hell you want when you're in your own house but like yeah it's it's just kind of we're in a contract when we're in society that's just it like we're in a contract like you you made the decision to have a child Mm -hmm. and i'm and i'm here for it and do it but like you (laughs) you gotta follow the rules yes speaking of following the rules Uh, Let's get into our next story from the LATimes.com. A woman. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Sorry. A woman allegedly had a full body orgasm at the LA Philharmonic during the performance of 
Tchaikovsky's Fifth Symphony a couple weeks ago at the Walt Disney Concert Hall, which if you haven't been, ugh, what a beautiful experience and what a great time seeing the LA Philharmonic. I don't remember having a full body orgasm when it happened, but, you know, to each their own. Uh, witnesses describe it as hearing a scream moan erupt from the balcony. Have you heard the audio? No, I wanted to hear it live. Oh, play it for yourself. Everyone will all listen together right now. (laughs) Okay. <laughs> Have we checked if someone was being murdered? It's definitely <laughs> what a an vibe. Optimum, optimum time to murder, and then have people be like, "Yeah, I heard a scream." And a, and I think an someone emission. just came. <laughs> yes, this is the beginning of a murder she wrote episode where Jessica Fletcher is sitting at the choir, and she hears her sitting at the bottom, and she hears this from the balcony, and everyone's <laughs> gossiping in the lobby. She's like. I think something else is happening here. Watch a lot of murder she wrote because it's like, yeah, oh, I got that vibe. That was very specific. <laughs> oh, that's crazy. The orchestra continued playing through the commotion. <laughs> so yeah. Yeah. I mean, you heard it. It hit right right in this like kind of break, which uh, here's the thing. So every, some there's everyone's got a different story who was actually there. There's yeah. some people like who said who, th- this woman who works happens to work for a jewelry company and lives in Los Feliz. I think that the L.A. Times, you know, must have just had to put that information in. <laughs> she said, I saw the girl after it happened. I assume that she had an orgasm because she was breathing heavily and her partner was smiling and looking at her like in an effort not to shame her, which like, <laughs> ew. And then there's other people who are like, yeah, that's definitely what happened. Like we saw it, you know, she obviously had an orgasm, but then there's other people who were like, I saw her that she maybe was having a medical emergency. And then some people were like, we think that she was narcoleptic and that she woke up and, you know, like, cause I guess sometimes when you wake up from narcolepsy, you can kind of like get frightened where you are. So there's all kinds of like rumors, but I just can't believe imagine you are this woman and it was like narcolepsy or like yes (laughs) oh yeah i (laughs) great everyone is remembering the time when i like accidentally pooped my pants at the la phil because i couldn't get out and everyone thinks it's because i had an orgasm (laughs) silver lake resident and music agent lucas burton said the sound from the audience member was wonderfully timed to a romantic swell in the symphony, I, 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 I feel the most logical conclusion is that she probably did fall asleep and mm-hmm. had that moment of, oh, oh God. And then her reports of her smiling and things like that is because she's probably mortified. Everyone's mortified. looking at her mortified. Yeah. I mean, whatever yeah. it was, my friend Alina made a joke, uh, watches tar once. <laughs> Tar, of course, oh. being the oh. movie about Kate Blanchett as a conductor. Ah, you, you know. Anyways, you yeah, I'm yeah. dying to talk about our next story. Oh, from clevescene.com. Also, love the publication name. Yeah. The Cleveland Scene. Love Clevescene. Love that. Mwah. So, oh. the office of Ohio Auditor Keith Faber today released the results of a special audit into the finances of Vinton Township and former Vinton fiscal officer, Cy Viestra, who in late in 2022 pleaded guilty to a string of charges stemming from $310,000 in public funds that he stole or misappropriated. Now, this list that they <laughs> said that this financial or fiscal officer bought with these public funds <laughs> is crazy he bought so, the craziest stuff this also could have been titled we bought a zoo <laughs> so honestly so, among the purchases a wildebeest like what i had to google 
what a wildebeest even looks like. Okay, for those who don't want to Google, it's like a crazy looking buffalo horse. Yes. <laughs> it's like, like a, a buffalo and a horse were the family same. member, but yeah, like a buffalo horse. It's a great way to say it. Like you see them at the watering holes when you watch documentaries about the African yeah. wilderness. They're always around drinking water. It's and not they a pet. <laughs> no. Yeah, no. it's not a pet. But he did buy two owls, possible pets, windows for a primate windows for a primate exhibit at a roadside zoo someone watched tiger king and said (laughs) oop i think i know what my midlife crisis looks like and do you think one hot tub would be sufficient no not when you're going insane with public funding how about five (laughs) hot tubs instead a snow cone machine which honestly who could fault him i'd steal money for a snow cone machine you know what i'd love anyone knows me what i would love is remember those like cart like the Snoopy snow cone machine makers like the the cartoons like the little individual you'd put ice it would grind it to like a bad you know just just, just not quite snow cone feel but just like bad ice yeah those, like, mini ones I would love one of those for personal consumption I would All right. love one of those anyway just putting out the vibes a riding lawnmower an animal rescue trailer <laughs> well he bought gazebo he got a golf cart. Oh, and then cart, got course. a riding lawnmower, which makes me think that he thought a golf cart cut grass and then was like, oh, shit, <sighs> Gotta I need this too. other thing. Yeah, <laughs> Tankless water heaters, uh, gazebos, uh, drum sets. We're reading like a, not even a third of what's happening. Kayaks. Um, he got a popcorn cart and a projector and a projector screen. Someone was throwing an outdoor movie party. Yep. A uh, CPR mannequin, my personal favorite. Probably Besides to have sex with. Will to be. <laughs> Let's be honest. Let's be honest. What <gasps> else does he need this for? He bought telescopes, plural, prepaid multiple phone, telescopes. men's clothes, <laughs> herbal cleaning supplies, animal food. Of course, you buy a will to be, you got to buy food. Uh, repairs just... for a four wheeler, probably because he bought a four wheeler after. They get cut grass. Cut grass. I mean, <laughs> toilets. Not doesn't list how many. Just toilets, <laughs> bikes, were- tricycles, and scooters. <laughs> all of them. He found it. He did all of this in four years, from 2016 to 2020. He misused a government debit card with stunning regularity. That's such a legal way of saying constant. <laughs> he created <laughs> fake invoices and bills to cover his tracks. And then somebody, uh, a tip from the Vinton County Auditor, Cindy Owings Wah, kickstarted the investigation. So, <laughs> can you imagine? Who tipped him off, you think? Maybe this guy's neighbor who was like, hey, it's fucking crazy over there. They have a drone, <laughs> a bunch of drum sets, five hot tubs, and some telescopes. It's <laughs> And he's a government employee. <laughs> That's yes. the thing. I, I've read so many of these stories about people in government that will buy like horses, drive hundred thousand dollar cars. And I'm like, babe, you're making sixty thousand dollars in the middle of Kansas. Like, in put that money away. And when you retire, fucking go live in France and buy a Rolls. You know what I mean? Like, obviously, you're not making because it's public information enough to keep up with this lifestyle like don't be if flashy looking, about it if you're, you're look, gonna do sorry crime. say the flashy say the flashy don't again, sorry don't be flashy about it if you're looking to scam that many people with that much money start a church thank you hello Remember? nobody says shit when those mega church people have planes and five <laughs> hot tubs and a golf cart riding lawnmower A four-wheeler and then, you know, the subsequent repairs. Do you remember our dear preacher that got robbed mid-service and it was live streamed? Yes. Oh, God, I think about him often. But uh, while I'm thinking about him and, and the wealth and riches that come from things, why don't we take a break to listen to a message from one of our sponsors? Okay. And welcome back. Wow. Wow. Welcome back. That was nice. Hey, Erica, who spilled the rice? Oh, well, I, it was me. I, I didn't see anything. I don't um, know. I'll never snitch. I'll never snitch. 
from khu.com. Southwest Airlines flight was delayed for an hour due to an unclaimed mess. This flight attendant didn't give two shits. She was not about to take off yeah. with this mess of rice. Yeah. She went up and down the aisles asking each passenger one by one loudly, who spilled the rice? This sounds like a fairy tale, like where you had to cross the bridge to get to the place. Like, was the it tro- you she's the troll. who spilled the rice? <laughs> like a troll or a witch that's like guarding her bridge. She's like, who spilled the rice? And it's a riddle. And if you have to come back <laughs> with like three goats and then you go, Twas me that spilled the rice, but only because I paid the price. <laughs> anyway. <Okay. laughs> it, just, it just felt natural. I had to go with it. it you, you crushed it. I mean, it rhymed. Passengers said the flight attendants refused to allow the pilot to take off until someone cleaned it up. And they were probably tired. It was the end of the day. They had a complete crew change, yada, yada, yada. But... No one copped up. No one. It was some sort of Asian fried rice from probably like the airport. It seems like you'd be able to figure out who that was. But I just can't imagine. I can't because you think the culprits would be whoever's closest to it. But it's probably not the truth. If I was walking down (laughs) the plane aisle and I spilled my stupid Panda Airport Panda Express, because that's what you, you know it was uh fried rice i would immediately be like oh my god oh god stop everyone stop boarding yes i can't believe i did this i i'd like to (laughs) report myself to the fbi and get on the the no fly list permanently because i've never been this embarrassed and i need to clean up this rice i would never just keep walking but what the thing what's up with people? If you don't know, Southwest Airlines allows you to board by boarding group and there are no assigned seats. So they go A1 through 30, A31 through 60, B1 through 30, you know, and so on and so on. And so that means that these people probably in the A boarding group, which I'm really disappointed in you, A boarding group. Yeah. Somebody dropped it and was going to sit like, let's say on an aisle in the six, six row. And then he said, oh, shit, I spilled all this rice. I better go to the back. And sit in a middle seat. <laughs> so you think that people dragged their like uh, carry on wheels just through the rice and no one said anything? No one said, what's up with all this fucking rice in the aisle? I don't know. So the eventually the flight <laughs> attendant got on the loudspeaker. She's like, we are not leaving until this rice is clean. I don't know why she sounds like this. She just does in my heart. And so eventually she cleans the rice. And the entire time, she's telling all the passengers how nobody was raised right and how disappointed she is in all of us. But honestly, solidarity to that plane, because they were like, even if we know who did it, at this point, we're not going to No snitches on (laughs) that plane. Unratted. (laughs) There's no way that they, there weren't at least three people on that flight who knew who spilled the rice. (laughs) It's like nobody snitched. It's not that I think you should leave where the, he crashes the Wienermobile and he's in the hot dog costume. And he's like, we're all looking for the guy who did this. <laughs> somebody just come clean. It's just like somebody with like a bag of Panda Express. <laughs> like, Honestly, wh- where are you? Hi- where are you hiding it? Like, oh. what? man, I don't know that I wouldn't also just volunteer to clean the rice, although just right. to get the and, plane off the ground like an hour and no one stood up and said this wasn't me because everyone yeah. would be like yeah it was but I like be, if i were the last person on the plane that's a hundred percent what i would do because they know you didn't yeah. spill the rice i got on here last okay? <laughs> but i'm gonna clean I was, it i was and you can all send drinks C- to my seat the middle was seat C- on row 26 <laughs> yep. c56 so you know it wasn't me <laughs> I'll show you my ticket too, but I'm going to clean this rice. Yeah. Did you see the video? I don't know if I sent it to you. This happened recently where this woman was being just an awful, awful like nightmare Mm -hmm. on a flight. And so some guy was like, hey, everybody, who thinks we should get her kicked off this flight? 
I'm serious. I'm serious. Raise your hand. Uh, stewardess, look, you've got 40, 50 people with their hands up back here who think she should be taken off this flight. Got voted off the plane, like survival, survivor style, because eventually this guy who was sitting next to her got up and said, ma'am, where's your bags? Like, let's just get this over with. And she's like, I don't know what I did. And it was like, <laughs> which there's no video of what she did. But as, as soon as she said that, you're like, girl, you did something. You know, you did something. There's no way <laughs> that 40 or 50 random strangers all just collectively agreed that you should be off this plane if you didn't do something. It was crazy. Somewhere there's a middle school guidance counselor telling someone like, listen, they're only picking on you because they like, which is bad advice, because they like you or they're jealous of you. Or, you know, like once you get out of high school, bullies will stop. Like somewhere someone's giving that advice. And this plane just said, no, if you have one vocal person that can get everyone to, to rally in the right way. God, that's like, I've always wanted to burst into song. You know that Gloria, I've always wanted to just have like a, a restaurant burst into song. Yeah. And I was drunk enough at an Olive Garden one time that I kept oh God. trying to start it. My table was like, okay, a couple people were doing it. And we were looking around like, join us. This could be a, this could be like Mama Mia. <laughs> Everybody come on. It didn't happen. It didn't happen. I just think it's insane that like, that airport because everyone talks about how like the rules are different in airports yeah you know that like you can wake up at 7 a.m get to your and then have a bloody mary you can start drinking (laughs) air i think that it's crazy that now there's also like plane law you know yes and that yeah if if enough people on that flight think you suck (laughs) you're out you're gone Go book and also what does that person do? I mean, they're probably a nightmare, so they probably I know exactly what they do. They go up to the front desk and go, ah, they all voted yeah. me off the plane, and you need to get me on something else <laughs> right now. They voted me off the plane. They said, they said that I had to leave, and I said, I don't get it. I don't know what I did <laughs> other than you know, say a bunch of crazy racial slurs when I was walking on and I spilled <laughs> a bunch of rice. Like, I don't get it. Pe- oh. Reroute me for free. You know, that's truly like, incredible. What, what do they say? <laughs> like the steward is just handing this off to the person on the ground being like, sorry, uh, <laughs> majority rules. This is plain law. I, I, so I, I had to fly Wednesday. I flew Southwest. It was the cheapest option I know. And I'm an A group. I paid $15 when I booked the ticket. So I would be an A group, right? Good for you. Oh, it was money well worth it. I made 16 I may 16th, the lady right in front of me, right in front of me, goes to scan her little ticket. So I th- assume she's A15 through A1. Oh no, she's B31. And she just marched her happy ass up into the A boarding group. And the guy was like, no, no. ma'am, that's B. You know, all the announcements we've been making about look at your ticket and only line up in your boarding group didn't apply uh-huh. to her. So I was like, oh, God bless. And then she's like, oh, gosh, I don't know. And well, the sweet little old lady in front of her, we get down the, you know, the galleyway, the, the plane. And she goes, sounds like bullshit to me. <laughs> I was like, that's true. You're a fun blue hair. And I love you. <laughs> God, people have lost their minds. Like, there's just like basic plane etiquette, like spilling rice, big, big plane etiquette. But I had a lady one row behind me on this flight. She's on the aisle. Somehow her friend got into the middle seat on the aisle across from her. And she continues to lean over the other aisle seat. And these two have like a conversation with each other for like the whole flight. Leaning. And that lady's just like trying to read her book and just trying to be left alone. And I was like, this is a minor plain etiquette infraction. But I'm sorry. You talk to the people that are in your row. Or on the aisle seat. End of list. Yeah. You don't carry a conversation over oh, across the aisle. I was like, mm, this this bitch crazy. Anyway, okay, we've talked a lot about planes, but we, we talk about sorry, Gloria. Here we go. Gloria. <laughs> Not an Olive Garden. You can't you can't start a it was flash un- mob at Olive Garden. Mama. It was unlimited pasta time. 
So it's like everybody's in here is feeling the mood. It's it's a Wednesday evening. What's the mood? The we I'm all have, have diarrhea two glasses of wine. We're all gonna be sick as hell soon. Let's just go crazy and start singing glory. Nobody went for it. I don't know crazy. how you guys feel, but <laughs> these two glasses of Kendall Jackson Chardonnay really have me feel like singing. <laughs> I just thought it was my moment, but I was also like, I'm a terrible singer. And like, I'm more the <laughs> hype man. If somebody else starts singing, I can get everyone else. But trying to be your own hype man and a bad singer to begin with didn't didn't get the, the glory of flash mob going like I thought it would. But have you ever had this like uniquely L.A. experience? Because it's happened to me, I want to say like two or three times, where someone with uh, a, 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 just a little change in their pocket and a big dream in their heart. <laughs> will walk into a restaurant uh-huh. and go, excuse me, everyone. I don't mean to take up much of your time. My name is Cassandra Cardenas, and I just moved here from Cleveland, Ohio to be a singer. And I'm going to make it really big one day. So I'd love to just sing a song for you guys. Amazing Gray. <laughs> like, God, I would, was... I would throw mashed potatoes at someone. Girl, I would that throw another has happened. Smash. That's never happened to me. That would... has happened to me three times. I would in die my life. Hand embarrassment. Oh my god, it's crazy when it happened. Then they just like finish. Let freedom ring. Thank you. And oh then they just walk god. out. They just leave. I'm like. This is someone who has been told or read like too many books about old Hollywood and been like, right, agents, they have dinner, they have lunch at this place. And when they know a star, when they see one, you just got a right place, right time kind of thing. And I'm like, there is no (sighs) agents eating at the Johnny Rockets on Universal City Walk. (laughs) Not a one. Okay. Oh, or someone thinking that they go to that they eat like a Caesar salad from the Ivy like three to four times a week. They'll they'll be seen. Yes. Did you did you ever hear about the time Pitbull had to perform in Kodiak, Alaska? No. Okay, so Walmart hosted a contest of where do you want Pitbull to perform, Mister Worldwide? Right. Just, of a, just a sweet old guy, just Mister Worldwide. So. A bunch of pranksters took the promo- like the this contest. So you were to vote like, oh, I would like for them to come to play my Walmart in Bakersfield, whatever. Well, somebody used the hashtag Exile Pitbull, <gasps> and it took a life of its own. And the Kodiak, Alaska, the most remote Walmart in the country, had seventy thousand likes on its Facebook oh page God. to win. Right, and he had to go, and he did. He just did it. Like he performed at a kodiak parking lot kodiak hey. Alaska parking lot and he has a photo fo- there's a photo with like him in like a big bear you know like of course 250 people i love attended. it mr yeah. worldwide guess where he's go- guess what alaska's part of the world the world thank you you know I-, I think he's a man of the people mr worldwide but you know i wonder what i, I wonder what pitbull chooses to drink and where he chooses to drink it uh, probably Crystal on Miami Beach. Why? Oh, that's fair. The New York Post, over $2,000 of Miller High Life cans were destroyed over their slogan, champagne of beers, <laughs> in Belgium because of European packaging laws. How many beers is $2,000 worth, $2, worth of Miller High Life, man? That's, <laughs> that's a lot of beer that got destroyed. 23 2352 cans. Wow. So it got uh <laughs> stopped after it arrived in Antwerp on the route to Germany. Then they just opened them up and they just dumped them out because there is this thing called the Comité Champagne. It's a committee designed to protect the French sparkly wines distinction. I'm sure you've heard this before. Whenever you're like, oh, I want some champagne and my my mimosa, that's champagne and orange juice. 
well, actually, my friend, that Cooks, that $4 Cooks that you're drinking <laughs> is not um, champagne. It's actually sparkling wine because of this committee champagne. Anything yeah. that is not considered from champagne. the champagne region is yep. sparkling wine. Uh, champagne region of France. They take it seriously. In 2005 to 2010, a bottle of Andre in Stillwater, Oklahoma was approximately $3.99. And I one time attended a party where I would say 12, 15, maybe 20 cases of Andre had been purchased, wow. shooken up for the nope. sole purpose of just spraying sparkling wa- champagne, as we probably referred to it at the time champagne on people it was like a a wet t-shirt party but champagne was it fun i've always wanted to do that you were just the floor was disgusting oh yeah it was a wooden floor at like a fucking you know auxiliary you know bear uh what are those things you know like a mason's club type deal where they rented it out to fraternities for cheap disgusting the walls you're sticky your hair's wet that laminate it's like pulling the laminate off with your like yes shoes god it was but god it was fun yeah they do it in formula one when they win the races they spray yes. uh i what was that that you brought to my house we did we had our love is blind uh um, reunion ooh. party where the reunion of course never played because netflix is a horrible <laughs> stupid company yeah. what did you bring what was the sparkling one you brought uh, oh, I think the sparkling wine was just like a like was a it Cooks, Cooks or, or yeah something yeah. Oh my God, Cooks now uses these plastic corks. Oh God, yes. <laughs> we there was three of us. We had to use tools, pliers, to get this off. We could not get this stupid. I was looking at YouTube videos. We couldn't. We everyone had a towel. Everyone had a turn. We couldn't get this plastic thing off. And then you put it back in, mm-hmm. at, you know, like because that's you take the cork out, you put it back in when you're while you're waiting. And then you went out to get the pizza. And then it was just me and the other girl who was with us. And we couldn't get that's when we brought out the pliers because we're like, <laughs> oh my God. And we're like, why did she put it back in? Like we knew why, because it's like an inst it's just that your instinct, you don't think. Yeah. But oh my God, that was so crazy. I'm like, uh, uh, no offense to you because it was a delicious cocktail and I'm glad you pre- brought it. But like <laughs> homeless people buy this kind of champagne. Yeah. Restaurants who do bottomless mimosas for $12 buy this kind of yeah. champagne. You can't make it this hard to open. That's no. ridiculous. No. Anyways, sorry. No, Back to yeah. the story. A lot of tangents uh, today. We're really on one. Uh, you know, so the they the the Belgium custom boss, uh Christian van Enderweren, told the reporters that the motto went against the protected designation of the origin champagne and goes against European regulations. And that's one thing they take pretty serious. So so essentially uh they were like, Hey, uh, this is what we had to do. And I would I would hope. That the customs ages, because in total, it was 2,352 cans. But I I think the total probably 2,358 in the six of them were like, let's just have one for a good time, huh, boys? Let's just have one. And they they did a little cheers to themselves and then chugged a, chugged a Miller High Life before they had to pull the rest of them out. So who knows? I think it's kind of stupid just because... <laughs> It doesn't say that it's champagne. They're not calling themselves champagne. They're saying they are the champagne of beers. So they're like acknowledging the the prestige of champagne. (laughs) Of course. And saying they are (laughs) equally as prestigious, which if you've ever had a Miller High Life, you'll agree. (laughs) The company released a statement. They said, we invite our friends in Europe to the U.S. anytime to toast to the high life together. Yeah, they're not going to change their slogan. Just nah, this is so much free press. France. They're like, come at me, Europe. <laughs> Biatch. <laughs> All right, well, we're running out of time. So let's just do some just some headlines, some, some quick, crazy headlines. So more than 30 years ago, a woman was shot dead by a clown. The suspect, now married to the victim's husband, just 
pleaded guilty. That was from abcnews.com. And, you know, that news story was playing on my in-laws uh, news TV. And I was like, oh, wow, look at that. It it really happened. So <laughs> I, I, I've been listening to a news podcast and it's been talking about the war happening in Sudan. Mm-hmm. And I, that was my first Google. And then my second Google of the day was this headline. Was sure. Like, well, at least I have my priorities straight a little bit. <laughs> yeah. From mirror.co, council spends 6,000 pounds on a pebble structure, but people think it looks like a baked potato. From NBCPhiladelphia.com, eight foot long alligator rescued from North Philly home. Big Mac, the eight foot alligator was rescued. From cbc.ca, a black bear breaks into a vehicle and guzzles 69 cans of soda. Ow, ow. Interesting that you said soda because as it is written, it is pop. Well, bitch, I want people to understand what I'm talking about. And I'm not from the pop, Midwest. They'll know what the pop. Mm, yeah, that's fair. Are you fair. a pop girl or are you soda? I grew up a pop. I now say soda, but I often say anything I'll say, I'll say do you want you want you want like a coke and they're like yeah and I'll go what kind and they'll be like Dr Pepper or Sprite or Peps like that I've that heard is that before the, too the, yeah that people just call it cola or they call it coke and then it's coke is the moniker all for carbonated flavored beverage what kind like you want a coke what kind but yeah. lemonade yeah That's crazy. And good marketing from the Coke people. And the last one we have is from theguardian.com. A boy trapped inside claw machine after climbing in to get a prize. He (laughs) He was was 13 years old. Not 13 years old. Yeah, no, he was a big boy and also (laughs) was rescued and then banned from that amusement park for (laughs) one year for attempted theft. But for a 13 year old, one year is like a, life a lifetime <laughs> a life sentence that's so yeah. funny hey Cass, are you ready i'm ready girl well good because it's time for the dumpster fire of the week oh my god we are a little bit late to the punch here just because we had to take the week off again i'm sorry but we had to use the dumpster fire of the week to honor the you know the trash god that came before us the, who walked so that we could run the trash daddy r.i.p jerry springer the influential u.s talk show host has died at age 79 yes he died uh in late april uh, i think it was like the 27th or something like that uh peacefully in his home in chicago Yes, he, uh, his family said that he died from pancreatic, pancreatic cancer. Uh, and so we wish them comfort, but he had quite the life. Let's just say he was a former mayor of Cincinnati. He obviously, we know him from the Jerry Springer show, but I think something people don't always understand is that his parents were Holocaust survivors. They escaped to England and, you know, uh, I think he had a very interesting life. <laughs> His, yeah, I mean, he, what? I didn't know oh. that he was a man. Oh, sorry. Oh, God. No. Uh, I didn't know that he was a politician. And apparently that's how his career started he was a politician he got he got his bachelor's degree in political Mm -hmm. science from tulane university and then he got a law degree in illinois a couple years later and he was an advisor on robert f kennedy's campaign and then eventually cincinnati city council in 1971 but not without his share of controversy he resigned his seat from the city council in 1974 after he admitted he solicited a sex worker he was quite of a liberal but he the thing that got him was that he wrote a check to the sex worker and there was a paper trail and that kind of kiboshed him yeah when he was running for governor of ohio unsuccessfully he he just said in a campaign ad he was just like listen nine years ago i spent some time with a woman i shouldn't have and i paid her with a check I wish I hadn't done that. The truth is, I wish no one would ever know. But in the rough world of politics, opponents are not to let personal embarrassments lay to rest. 
So he was like, let's He's just get like, this out of the way. <laughs> get get it out before they can. And by the way, no. he, you know, like when he stepped down from city council, he ran for re-election after and like again apologized, addressing it head on. And then the panel was like, you know what? How about in 1977? How about you're the mayor now? You know? Yes. So yeah. But uh, he did stop. He was done with being a politician after his failed gov- gubernatorial gubernatorial campaign. And then he started working as a political commentator. And that kind of started his television career before he finally got his talk show. <laughs> and And let's just take some moments to think of Jerry Springer and the talk show moments. I mean... <laughs> it was always any time that you were you stayed home from school sick it was like wheel of fortune you could catch no not wheel of fortune um you could catch price is right and then mm-hmm. you could catch the jerry springer show and see always on in Planned parenthood as well i feel like uh yeah when you ditch school to go to Planned Parenthood, they always have Jerry Springer on the television. I mean, it would be like the the KKK fighting uh, black little people or just the most insane groups together. I mean, he did have obviously, you know, again, trash. Like he wasn't the saint, you know, He, he, he brought on controversial groups. You know, your mom is seeking with your boyfriend and his secret gay lover. (laughs) <laughs> you know, you know like it just big paternity test re- very infamous like you mm-hmm. are not the father kind of moments like he i feel like he started that and there was also some backlash there was a oh, title or a segment entitled secret mistresses confronted and one of the women in that segment like was found dead within hours of the broadcast oh. so you know but also like whose fault is it? Probably not hers. It's probably these people who went on national television to reveal this stuff. But he he defended what he did. He admitted like, you know, that it's kind of goofy and that he was affecting the culture. But he did say that anyone who called what he did trash was being elitist. He said, if you call what he does trash, then you're being elitist because celebrities will go on talk shows to talk about who they've slept with and the drugs that they're on and their misbehavior Mm -hmm. and people are obsessed with it and they love it. So what's the difference to give real people that same kind of scandalous exposure? Yeah. I mean, he brought on real stories (laughs) and some of it felt maybe exaggerated, but we'll never know. You know, I'm sleeping with, you know, both sisters. It's like, We need to get to the bottom of this. Thank you. I All we do is on this podcast is talk about how, or at least me, if I hear (laughs) some tea going on, I'm like, shh, everyone shut the fuck up so I can eavesdrop on this, you know? He brought it to the forefront and said, don't worry about eavesdropping. I'll I'll tell you right now what's going on with these people who say I left home to join the circus and came back as a drag queen who stomps on balls for a living like you know truly truly it's just uh, uh, r.i.p great r.i.p there this is unrelated but just something i really want to bring in karen gillen who is the actress who portrays nebula and the guardians of the galaxy you know lots of different things she's Um, in jumanji as well jumanji doctor who you may know her from she posted a photo since it was released on friday you'll be hearing this on monday where she did a screenshot she released a screenshot from the time she had forgot she had scheduled couples therapy session on the day we were shooting so it's a zoom couples therapy with the (laughs) therapist her boyfriend and her in full nebula makeup which is bald head blue that's so funny (laughs) It's truly my favorite moment of, um, <laughs> I just, you know, it just had to come to light, had to come to light. So what are you hoarding? I'm hoarding a book and it's a nice book. It's called the Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society by Mary Ann Schaefer. I'll say it again. The Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society by Mary Ann Schaefer. It's just nice. Okay. It's it takes place right after World War II, and it's about an author in London who 
is becomes pen pals with these people who live on this island off of the UK called Guernsey and that was occupied by the Germans. And so they're telling their stories about what life was like during the occupation. And so it's got some heavy subject matter, Mm -hmm. but it's so sweet. And the whole thing is told with, within like letters Mm -hmm. of like, you know, either the author talking to the people from Guernsey or the Guernsey people talking to her or the author talking to her editor and telling them all about this. Like, it's just, Ugh, I loved it. I listened to it on audiobook. And so they had like a few different actors, Aww. which was nice. But I'm sure it's also nice to read hardcover. But mm-hmm. I really liked it. It was it was just nice. Someone else recommended it to me. And it took me a long time to get to it because I was like, what? I think that they made a Netflix movie about it. But like, I'm not even going to watch mm-hmm. that. And I don't think that anyone else should. Just read <laughs> The Guernsey Literary and Potato Peel Pie Society if you're looking for a nice fiction to read. Nice. Read nice. it. What are you hoarding? I'm hoarding. There's a show on Peacock and just the general concept of, but it's called Swedish Death Cleaning. And it's an Amy Poehler project, but it the gentle art of Swedish death cleaning is essentially they have three experts. So uh, let's say a psychologist, a, you know, a home organizer and somebody that is a professional cleaner. And these three Swedish experts come to people and they essentially help cleanse your belongings. They ask you to, a Marie Kondo style thing where you look at your possessions and you slowly give them away and repurpose them to people in your life that would love them. But it's like, it's also remembering your life and embracing those things throughout. And it's really just kind of, you know, the the process of editing down your life's belongings and worth and then not worth, but your life worth of belongings and saying, this is just what I need to live. And I want, you know, if you have like a sweater that, that your granddaughter loves or your niece, it's like, give that to them now so that you can see them wearing it rather than just maybe leaving it for them or something. And it's just a really beautiful show. I've, I've watched a couple episodes and it's just, it's a great way to process like grief, your own, you know, confront your own mortality. And also just remember that like these possessions, they may have memories, but don't we want those memories to carry on in some way? Don't we want, you know, the, that to be out in the world? And it's just a really sweet, cute show. And there's a lot of, you know, themes that are hitting for me right now. So it's, it's really neat. It's based on the book, the Gentle Art of Swedish Death Cleaning, but it's it's a really cute show on Peacock. So I would recommend pick up the book and pick up the uh, pick up the show. So you are keeping the lights on over there at Peacock. I'll tell you what, I, I, I am the one. Peacock, you can write me a check any time. I'm but plugging it, it, your shit. That is nice, though. You know, there's been, you know, there's been death and dying surrounding the trashy trashy family. And how grateful we could all be to pass away peacefully in old age. And so this is, it's a nice concept to kind of get that. Yeah, I don't know. Anyways, it's a nice, it sounds like a nice show. I don't know if I'll watch it because I cry easily, but I think it's a nice show. I think it's a nice idea. You know, it's, it's, it's not, maybe you have to be in the right space, right? Sure. Place for it. So just know like emotionally, like if you're not, this, this reminds me of a, a Jack Handy quote from you know, the old SNL, Jack Handy. And he said, when I die, I want to go peacefully in my sleep like my grandfather. Not screaming in terror like the passengers in his car. (laughs) That's Uh, funny. That's truly, yeah, one of my favorites. But uh, yeah, what are you throwing away? What are you getting rid of? Like, what's, what's, What's going to be Swedish death cleaned from your life right now? Okay, don't come at me because this isn't my fault. Okay, it is just... Something that I observed on my honeymoon and continue to observe sometimes. Hey, Europeans, can you stop like just stopping in the middle of where you're walking suddenly? (laughs) I have never. (laughs) In the United States, you're going to get ran over. But people (laughs) in Europe, man, they just will stop. They'll just stop walking. And I was like, this is crazy. It, certainly I'm the only one who's noticing this and maybe I'm just being impatient. But Taylor noticed it too. And we're like, what's up mm-hmm. with it? Maybe, maybe it's not all Europeans, but I'll tell you what, if you're in France or Portugal or Spain, you do it. <laughs> and it needs to stop. 
Stop just stopping. It's not, I'm not being like a rushed American who's running off to work or whatever <laughs> accurate things that you think of us. I'm just trying to like get, I'm trying to get to the train. I'm trying to get to a dinner reservation or I'm just trying to walk through a museum. Same as you. Why did you just stop? Why did you just stop? And they don't move. You don't move to the side. If you need to stop and check your phone, you you pivot and you move to the side of a yeah. public walkway. You lay flat against a wall. <laughs> yes. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I can't. It's crazy. <laughs> Knock it off. Like, what's the deal with that? If you're <laughs> European and you know that I'm right, tell me why you do that. Like, what's up? I'm not going to judge you. I just, if I can I have some understanding, then maybe I won't be so salty about it. But until I get that, you guys are being a little annoying. <laughs> I'm sorry. What are you throwing out? Okay. Mine's similar to uh, on the walking path. Let's say I was recently dog sitting for some friends. They had to take care of some family matters. And so <laughs> about 11, 12 days, I'm dog sitting adorable little doggies. I absolutely, if you follow Trashy Trashy social media, maybe you've, you know, this story, you know, what, maybe what's coming. I'm, I don't, I don't wake up typically before the sun almost ever, but I'm about an eight o'clock, eight 30 person yeah. since the pandemic. I, I wake up a little bit later and the dogs want to go out at about six 30 to seven 30. So I'm adjusting my life to that. I'm out there basically my pajamas or a sweatshirt, no bra, you know, I'm, I'm taking, I'm, my job is to make sure these dogs are safe, cared for, you know, protected, all these things. It, I, dog people, I'm not coming for you. Know that most dog people, if you greet someone else with the dog, it's a hello, but you need to make sure the dogs are somewhat separated. There's not often a lot of talking in the middle. The non-dog people that see you in the morning and want to spend 30 minutes talking to you. What about me says I want to engage in conversation now. I'm wearing earbuds, sunglasses, no bra. Like, I don't want to engage with you. People would not stop talking to me on the sidewalk. I made friends. I know people's names. I don't want that. I don't want any of that. Am I crazy? Like, I started, I, I, one day I wore rollers out in my hair. Still got stopped and talked to. I was like, please stop doing this. I know the dogs are cute. Just say, what a cute, what cute dogs. And then let's keep it moving. I just don't do that. If somebody's walking the dog, they probably just want to like walk them and then get back to what they were doing. Unless they're like at a dog park. Anyway, I'm Oof. sorry. I'm, I'm, I'm I don't sorry. Want, I want to talk people. less. I want to talk, talk less at the dog park, but less. But yeah, I, I, I you know, dog people. And not people with dogs. I'm talking about dog people that are like, oh, I see a dog. I want to talk to that person with the dog. No, no. We're, don't do that. I'm throwing that out. Throwing that out. Let me just make an exception because, <laughs> look, I you know I hate small talk. Historically, <laughs> I just hate it. It yeah. uh, makes me uncomfortable. I hate it. But if someone is older and wants to come and pet the dog and chat a little bit, I go, you know what? You didn't grow up with phones. This is probably normal for you. Yeah. You so can't I'm going to, I'm going to bring myself to your level and let you enjoy my nice puppy before I move on, you know, cause I get it. I get it. Yeah. There was a one time <laughs> where this woman kind of I was walking the dog and then this woman kind of strolled out of her apartment and she looked around our age and like, you know, but she was barefoot and she had a diet Coke and just kind of started dancing out of her apartment, like literally dancing, like pharmaceutical ad kind of dancing. But she was like wearing like a, like an inside dress with no bra, you know what I'm saying? And I was like, okay go off queen but then like i was just trying to walk and then she was like don't mind me i'm just dancing and i was yeah it was uh, a little odd and i remember texting my friends being like she she looks like us she's our age she's got a diet coke like in an inside dress on with no bra this could be any of us and <laughs> like let this be a psa to any like given wednesday <laughs> Yeah, be thankful that you haven't reached the part in your 
job where you're like, I'm going to go dance outside. Yes. <laughs> before I have a mental breakdown if I'm not oh. already in the throes of it. So <laughs> it was a, <laughs> it's nice. Dogs will get you outside, but sometimes that's the negative too, is that dogs will get you outside. Where can people find you, Cassandra? Not dancing and you're inside dress with no bra with your Diet Coke on the balcony. Where can they find you? I'm private on Instagram again. So if you want to follow me at Cast Cardiness, I need you to message me and be like, hey, I listen to Trashy Trashy. Otherwise, I'm sorry, but I'm not going to accept you. I don't mean anything by it, but I don't know who you are. And I'm just getting a little weird these days with social media. So where I'd like you to find me is right here on the Trashy Trashy podcast every Monday, except the Mondays where shit hits the fan and we just literally can't. Mm -hmm. Where can the people find you? You can find me at Iconic Erica Curry on Instagram and TikTok. Same handle at Iconic Erica Curry. (laughs) And always on the Trashy Trashy pod on Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, Instagram. It's trashy trashy pod is our handle we're the number one source for trashy news um you can listen wherever your podcasts are available and to get more people to listen if you share this podcast with a friend leave a review give it five stars on your you know whatever podcast platform you're listening that helps the podcast grow an audience so we would love to have you there you can always buy merchandise to support this podcast and and let people know your baby trash can at trashy trashy podcast.com where we have all of our options are you know your florida man your baby trash cans your mama trash can is daddy tra- is it, you know trash daddy a t-shirt coming mm. absolutely a redesign of the florida man shirts oh it's coming so you know, head on over to trashy trash podcast.com and you can always financially support this podcast at anchor.fm slash trashy trashy slash support. There's also links to all of this in the show notes, as well as all of our stories every week. And hey, Cass, what's going on, girl? Take care of yourself and each other. Wait, no, that's what Jerry Springer says. Uh, oh, what do we say? Stay, stay garbage. You stay garbage, girl. I will. Bye-bye. Bye bye. Bye.